Welcome back, my pupils. This is Gene coming to you with Reloading from the Hot Pot. Hey, today I'm going to do a deep cleaning on my Sig Sauer P320 AXG. Now, this video was inspired by Chris from the 740. Check out his channel. I'll leave a link below. Every Wednesday night, we have Chris from the 740 live chat, and I am very humbled and very fortunate to be a panel member on there. Now my SIG P320 AXG Pro has not been cleaned for a couple rounds, so she's a dirty girl. So we're going to show clear, nothing in it, no magazine, before we start this little adventure. Now the first is a simple disassembly. If you own a SIG P320, you understand how to disassemble this. But if you don't, and you've never cleaned your P320, here's how you do it. You First, you lock the slide back. You rotate the takedown lever, which mine is a go-gun gas pedal, so it looks a little different. It's not your stock one. Then you release the slide and pull the slide off of the frame. Now you can see in here, we got some gunk. I like to run all of my stuff wet. Um, it just it works good for me. Everybody's going to do this a little bit differently. You know, tomato, tomato. As long as you're keeping your firearm clean and lubed to your satisfaction and that it works properly for you, that's all that is necessary. There's the slide. Show how dirty that is. That is just nasty. So we're going to start taking this apart. The first thing I'm going to do is the slide. So we take the recoil spring, guide rod out, take the barrel out, and you've got it pretty much. This is field stripping disassembly. But we're going to go a step further. And we're going to take the actual firing pin striker mechanism out of it so what you do is you take a punch and you press down on this little piece here push that down slide the backing plate off being very careful nothing ejects out of it let that go and your striker mechanism comes out of it now the Sig Sauer striker mechanism is a lot different than the Glock there's a lot of little spring in here a little moving parts so you really don't want to be disassembling this unless you know what you are doing for reassembly for proper function so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get a general wipe of it I use t-shirts I use old t-shirts just get a general wipe of this I use old t-shirts for the basic wiping I use t-shirts for my patches as you see here I just cut up old pieces of old pieces of t-shirt and use those I believe in recycling and reusing everything got a good wipe down of that Mm. Yeah, that's not too dirty there. Get a little look at this. We're going to get an initial wipe down of it with the t-shirt. Just to get the residual gunk off. Now, it's, it's pretty nasty. <laughs> I mean, this t-shirt's pretty, pretty nasty, but this is pretty nasty in here, too. Boy, this is gross. I need to clean them more often. But, you know... I don't I just don't believe I have to clean my firearm every time I shoot it some people do some people are anal about it and that's fine if you are you are you do you do you do you I do me but this is just the, the basic cleaning of this firearm just gonna do a quick wipe of the barrel get any any old gunk and oil off of it for the first Get down to all the little spots. Feed ramp, get the residual off of there. We are going to spray this down and soak this down with some uh, Lucas Bore Solvent. I like Lucas products. I use Lucas products in my car, my motorcycle, and my gun. I just like it. Wipe down this guide rod here. This is a steel guide rod. Get a good wipe of the spring too. You know, don't torque it around too much, but you know, at least run it through. And you can see, I mean, that's it's really dark in this. This dirty t-shirt is getting even more dirty. Isn't that just incredible? We're gonna get a clean, we're gonna get another mat out, and I'm gonna put a couple of these items on here and spray them down and let them soak. I've got a specific mat for doing this with. It's one of those I bought at Walmart and I cut it up into smaller pieces and I use it for this for this kind of stuff. 
Uh, that way I'm not getting it all over my, my good mats. Spray some down into the bore. Make sure it's running all the way down. Give a good, give a little misting to everything. Give a misting to the inside of the slide here. And we will just let that soak for now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fire control unit out of the grip module. To take the fire control unit out of the grip module, you just pull on the go gun gas pedal here, pop that out, and that's going to need cleaning too. So we're going to lay it to the side. We're going to give a little, a little spray of that on both sides. Yes, I do. I did put my bore clip bore solvent in a little Mr. Spray bottle. I find it's just more convenient. So next we're going to take the fire control unit out of this and we're going to see how gunky this is. Ooh, look at that. That's nasty, isn't it? I mean, my fingers are just screaming at me for getting this much gunk and dirt on them. <laughs> but what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do this in the frame is I'm going to take them outside and I'm actually going to spray brake parts cleaner on them. I'm going to clean this off with brake parts cleaner, let it dry, and then I'm going to re-lube it the way that I like my things lubed. The brake parts cleaner I like to use is, yes, Super Tech. Now, parts some cleaner. people will disagree with me about using brake parts cleaner to clean a frame, but I have never had brake parts cleaner do anything, mark a frame, stain a frame, or strip a frame as long as it had a good quality finish on it. So, you know, use brake parts cleaner at your own risk. Um, I use it. So I may get some slack from some people on here, but you do you, I'll do me. This is just the way I do it. And that fire control unit looks so much better. It looks like it just came out of the box. Isn't that just nice looking? I mean, just some brake parts cleaner, a quick spray down. I'm going to go back through and re-lube all the key points. Uh, because like I said, I do like to run mine a little wet. Actually, I like to run a lot wet, but that's me. So, before we do anything else, I'm going to take some of my Lucas Lube. I'm going to hit some key points and areas on here that I like to see lubed up. Basically, anything that's moving parts. You know, if you've got metal on metal contact, you're probably going to need some lube in there to maintain freeness of it. So, especially down in here behind this trigger, that trigger bar where it contacts. It's going to be cleaned again, so I mean, you really can't over lube these things. You can definitely have them under lube, though, that's for sure. But any place I see any metal on metal contact, I squirt a little lube into. You know, I want this thing running smooth, reliable. I don't want it falling apart on me at the races. And so far, my practices have. Uh, benefited me with not having many failures um, other than you know self-induced <laughs> now we you know how that is we're gonna set that to the side we're gonna set the clean frame to the side frame is clean down inside no carbon buildup or anything next we're gonna go for some scrubbing on the barrel now we've already got some lube or a bore cleaner bore solvent I'm sorry not lube bore solvent on in the barrel itself but spray a little bit more on there get real good right down here and go ahead and do a couple passes through it there we go you know I've been running some copper plated through here I've been running some powder coated through here uh, a little bit of this a little bit of that so I like to give it a little bit of scrubbing, you know, back and forth. I still use the bristles. Um, some people do, some people don't. I do. So, we'll take that off of there. We'll get our brush out. And we're going to brush around the chamber here. Get this really, really good. Lots of buildup right here. Lots of carbon buildup. So you definitely want this area of your firearm clean for proper feeding and function. Get in here, get in underneath this, the sides. You know, just give it a once overall, especially on the tip. Get 
that nice and clean right there. And we're going to uh, wipe this off and run some patches through it. So we're going to do a quick wipe down of the outside. Ye old dirty t-shirt. Barrel looks really good for having a lot of rounds on it, doesn't it? I mean, there's barely any marks on that barrel at all. Got a little scuff here. Uh, but otherwise, man, that's a, got a little scuff there. Otherwise, it's a really nice, really nice looking barrel. As many rounds as I've put through this AXG. So we're going to attach the patch wand to it. Patch holder thingy, holder wand. Call it whatever you want. Run a patch through it a couple, a couple different times. That one's dead. Grab another one. Oh, we dropped it. I knew I was going to drop something in this video. You know, it just ain't that easy making videos. Let me tell you. All my YouTube brothers know what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes you get criticized for it. You're doing that wrong. You're doing this wrong. Well, you know, you do you and I'll do me. And that barrel looks excellent. Look at that. Excellent, excellent, excellent clean barrel. We're going to take this, the guide right here, wipe it down. Any carbon buildup or any dirt, grime, or debris off of it. Inspect it. Looks, everything looks good. Gonna take that spring, roll it through the old t-shirt here. Now you can wear gloves when you do this too, if you like getting your hands greasy and dirty. But uh, I grew up in a dirty, greasy environment, working in garages and such, so it doesn't really bother me too much. Wipe off your takedown. Inspect it, look at the o-ring on it, make sure the o-ring is good. O-ring appears to be just fine. Next, we're going to do the slide. So the slide, just going to give a little scrub in here, down the rails. The Q-tips I do use for getting inside the rails are the pointed ones. You know, Harbor Freight's got this really nice bag of Q-tips that comes in all different sizes of Q-tips. It is crazy how many different sizes. I think you got some that you big enough to put up your nostrils. I got some that are too big to put up your nostrils. So they actually have nice assortments. These, um, I forget where I picked these up. I've had these for so long. But that's a lot of gunk out there. Look at that. You know, I don't really even neglect my firearms. I just use my firearms. And I give them a good cleaning when I feel it's necessary. But I definitely get all that gunk out of that rail there. As you get down inside the striker channel, you're going to use a regular round household Q-tip. You want to you clean your nose and whatever else out, whatever else you want to clean out with it. And we get a bunch of gunk out of there. Look at that. That is nasty. can't believe it's been so long since I've cleaned this thing. <laughs> it's only been to two events, two events, since the last time it was clean. I like to get down there. Try to get that as dry as possible. Look at that. Ooh, that was the second time around. Let's do that one again. So we're going to take the Q-tip. We're going to fluff her up a little bit. A little fluffiness out of her. Put that down in there. Hopefully that grabs some more of that debris and that grime that's got into that striker channel. That is a lot. Wow. It's amazing how much stuff builds up, you know? Um, just do, you know, three, four, five hundred rounds, you know, so if you're out shooting, uh, you need to be cleaning your, your firearm as well. And there's some really good instructional videos out there for this. Hopefully mine will be one of those. We're going to use this last one on it. Get down in there. Looking pretty good, actually, compared to the way it was. That thing was dirty, 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 dirty. Now, when I use when I clean this out, I like to take the brush and put the brush inside of the old the old rag T-shirt, whatever you're using, and get down there and suck, absorb all that nasty stuff with that. Instead, of just brushing it or wiping it down with something, 
like to get that this brush in there get it all over this clean wipe down every little part of that get the extractor you're gonna get some oil on your on your glass don't worry about that I'll wipe off don't worry about that don't worry about getting anything on your optic so we got that done so we're gonna take the other end of the rag that's not so bad and do one final little wipe down of that I really love Lucas products I've had really really good luck with them their bore solvents great their lube is great um, just been very happy with all of their products so that's that so we're gonna put this back together now before I put this back in the striker I am gonna put a little lube on it just in a couple little key areas just where I see where it rubs it's gonna get taken apart and cleaned again so it does not hurt to put a few drops of lube on that some people will say don't lube your striker some people say do lube it I do and I forgot a spot so I'm gonna put a couple little spots on here just where the springs contacting it's obvious to see where it's contacting at I'm gonna reassemble this sliding this back in we're gonna put the back plate back on it the hands are a little greasy I'm gonna get that down push this back down in slide that up and that's locked so you're good to go striker is back in and functioning <clears throat> next we're just going to do a re basic reassembly um, I'm going to put some lube on it in key spots I think we'll put some on the top of the slide here some here I'm going to run a big bunch of a ride down that rail and let it just run down that rail I just like to let gravity do its job. Put the barrel back in. Drop a little spot of lube right here. Along the sides where it's touching the front, where it's touching the slide, where the barrel and slide do connect. Put the spring back together. This can be kind of a pain in the butt. Ooh, that went nicely. I am so happy that went nicely on camera. And then I put some stops of a lube down recoil, guide rod, and spring. Because, well, they're going to be moving together. So you definitely want that to be this way. Now I'm just going to put the fire control unit back into the frame. There we go with that. Do, 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 do. Put the takedown lever back in. Get lined up right. There we go. Lined up correctly. Put it back on the right way. That might help. Yep, sure does. Lock it back. Takedown lever automatically flipped up. Text, test function. Function test. All nice and clean now. Now we take another microfiber towel that I have around on my case for my tool stuff and just give a really good wipe down of the whole gun itself. You know, you want to keep things clean. Clean is good. Wipe off the dot lens inside and outside because, well, you know, while you're cleaning it, you're just touching everything. I think that looks pretty dang good. Yes, it does. So, if you liked it, if you got any suggestions, pass them through. Pass them by. Pass them by. So, that's the first part of this. I'm going to show you something else next. The next thing I'm going to clean is my magazines. Now, I have Taylor Freelance base pads on here, so they do come apart with some Allen screws on the back of it. So, you want to break the Allen screws. 
This slides right up. And you can slide this right off. Careful of the spring. <laughs> Don't let that spring fly out of there. Woo, that thing can go flying across the room. I've had to chase them a few times. So we take the follower off of it, and I take my dirty old t-shirt is what I use. This thing's got so many solvents and cleaners on it. So I wipe this down. That's the follower. Spring, spring looks pretty good. Just give a little general wipe to it. But the magazine itself, now, you can clean the outside of it all day long. Get the carbon build up off that lip there. But what do you do about the inside? Well, here's what I do about the inside. For the inside of it, I take a 12 gauge cotton. Looks like a big old cotton swab, don't it? <laughs> Comes with your cleaning kits for, for shotgun. I take one of these and I use white lightning. It's bike chain care in one easy step. It cleans, lubricates, and stops rust. So I'll spread some of this on here and I'll go in my magazines with it. And it goes all the way to the top, but I make sure to get all the way around. Get all that gunk. Now, this white lightning is a dry lubricant. When it dries, it still maintains lubrosity. So, being that it does that, I'm actually cleaning and lubing the inside of my magazines at one shot. So we put the follower back on. Hopefully I'll put it back on the right way. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yep, that's the right way. And put your base pad back on and just let it dry. Let it air dry. Yeah, I'm doing this against my belly down here, so. You know, springs can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. If you do this, you know what I'm talking about. You get the spring, see, there's a spring flipped on me. So we're gonna do it one more time. There we go. Back down to this little home. Tighten this up. Get that back down there. Tighten that side up. Tighten this side up. And you have cleaned and lubed your magazine. I did a lot of homework on this stuff before I started using it. And once I realized what it is and uh, what it does, I use it now for any place that I really don't want oil. Um, you know, in your magazines, you definitely don't want any like plain oil down in there. You want something that's going to dry. So I'm going to do the second magazine and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, we're done with the second magazine. We're going to tighten up the back plate to the mag extension. Taylor Freelance, I love their products. Use them, buy them for multiple, multiple, multiple firearms. Everyone they sell for, actually. Anything I need that they sell, I get from them. Now, I'm not paid by Taylor Freelance. I don't get anything for free from them. I'm not affiliated to them. Nothing. I just really like their products. But that's how I clean and lubricate my P320. Your experience may vary. You may do things a little differently than I do. You may not use brake parts cleaner. I do. You may not use Lucas products. I do. Whatever you do, just take care of, just make sure you take good care of your tools. I mean, that's, that's the main thing is taking good care of your tools. Love this stuff. Love Lucas products. It's all I use is Lucas bore solvent and lube on everything I use. Uh, even got some Lucas Extreme Duty CLP that I use on my, uh, my, AR, my ARs, my rifles. So, um, that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you got any comments, any suggestions, uh, leave them below. I'm more than, more than open to, to comments and suggestions. That's for sure. It's how we learn things. Well, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate you. Check out my affiliate links below. And always remember to keep blowing the smoke. Shoo.